Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Over the past couple months, I've received a few emails from photographers telling me that they're having a difficult time using Topaz Labs Photo AI as a Photoshop plugin. In today's video, I'm going to explain the issue that they're encountering, and then I'm going to demo how to use Photo AI to avoid that issue. Before I do though, I do want to mention that I have a new course out, and not coincidentally, that new course is on Topaz Labs Photo AI. It's called Mastering Topaz Labs Photo AI. Currently, the course has 17 videos. It has PDF outlines for each of the videos that you can download and print at home. And of course, you get all of the files that I use in the videos so that you can work along with me at home. Now, I mentioned that currently it has 17 videos. Those of you familiar with Topaz Labs know that they often update Photo AI. If going forward, Topaz Labs updates Photo AI and they add something to it or they change something about it significantly, I will do a video or videos on it and add those videos to the course. Now I have the course divided up into sections. There's a quick start section. Obviously watch this section to get started quickly using Photo AI. If you want a little more detail, you could watch the other section. I have one on enhancements. I have one on tools. And then I have a miscellaneous, miscellaneous section where I just cover everything I didn't cover previously and tie up a few loose ends. Now in the description below this video, I have a link to my website and the course, and I'll have a discount code for the course. I'm not sure how long the discount code will last. Part of me says it's going to last a week. Another part of me says maybe I should let it run all month. So I really don't know. So take advantage of it. Um, you know, if you can, as soon as you can. Again, all that will be linked in the description below this video. Now, what is the problem that photographers are having with Photo AI when they use it as a Photoshop plugin? Well, it's mainly wildlife photographers because they often do a lot of cropping. Now, I have this image of the chickadee on this deadlock, right? And actually, I love this image. I love the background as it is because it looks painterly and I probably wouldn't do anything uh, with it in real life, but let's just pretend that I want to crop away most of the background and just focus on the chickadee. So in Photoshop, I would get the crop tool and I would get the original ratio and I'd go vertical on it and I'd crop down like this nice and tight on our chickadee DDD, right? Okay. So super tight, I'm cropping away a lot of pixels. So we'll click the little check mark to commit to their crop. Now, if I go up to image and look at image size, you'll see that the image size now is 2242 by 3360. That's what about seven megapixels at the most, maybe a little more closer to six and a half. Either way, it's a pretty small image now. And it looks pretty good, but if I wanted to print it, I wouldn't be able to get a very large print from it. But I have Photo AI and Photo AI has upscale and I could upscale it in Photo AI and make it bigger. So let's do that. And the way you send an image from Photoshop to Photo AI is you go up to filter. And by the way, this isn't the recommended fit. You know, I should teach this the right way. Okay. The way I do it in the course. What I recommend you do before you send an image to Photo AI is you duplicate the background layer by hitting Commander Control J. All right. Got the duplicated layer. Then you want to make that layer a smart object. If you make that layer a smart object, any editing you do in Photo AI is re-editable. Re what I mean by that is you do your stuff in Photo AI, come back in Photoshop, and you look and you go, oh, you know what? I didn't reduce uh, noise enough. I need to go back and redo it. Well, you could go back and redo it if you make this layer a smart object. Do that. Go up to Filter, Convert for Smart Filters. Now you can tell that this is a smart layer or smart object because it has this little square in the corner. Now let's send it to Photo AI. So we'll go up to Filter, then down to Topaz Labs, and then over to Photo AI. Okay, so far so good. Nothing out of the ordinary, right? We're in Photo AI. Autopilot is running. It's going to determine what is needed to be done on this image. And Autopilot has determined that Sharpen needs to be done. Now you look in the top right hand corner, it says 2242 by 3660, and I want to enlarge it, right? So I'm going to go to Add Enhancements, and I'm going to go to Upscale. But you'll notice it says 
Upscale cannot change the image size when using the filter plugin. Launch Topaz Labs AI in Photoshop by using the file automate in order to upscale the image. And you may think, well, maybe that's because you cropped it, Tony. Maybe that's because you cropped it in, in Lightroom. Maybe you should have cropped it in Photo AI. Well, if you look, the crop tool is disabled as well. Crop is disabled when using the filter plugin. Launch Topaz Photo AI in Photoshop by using the file automate in order to crop or upscale the image. This is the problem they're encountering. Now, they don't know how to do the automate feature, and I'm going to show you how to do that. But let's just say it, let me, it's, it lets me do like the upscale thing. I could put upscale on it. But you'll notice that there is the part of the upscale tool that allows me to enlarge the image is missing. There isn't the 2x, the 3x, 4x, max. Um, I can't come in here and just double click on width or double click on height and write in or type in an exact dimension. It will not allow me to do it. So what it's doing is it's just adding upscale to this 2242 by 3360 image and it's doing minor to noise, minor to blur, and fixed compression for the high fidelity AI model. That's all. I just can't upscale it this way. I can't crop it this way, period. Now, one thing I noticed, when it does this and it's not really upscaling, it takes forever. And the fans on my computer go full blast for whatever reason. I'm, I have no idea why. It says enhancing, and you see the uh, the little circles almost square, and then it does it again. And see how it says enhancing, and it's doing it all over again. So we're not going to sit here and watch this because I can't upscale it this way. So let me show you how to do it. We're going to escape out of here. I'm not going to save it. We're right back in Photoshop now. The bad thing, though, about doing it this other way is you won't be able to go back in and re-edit it. So it doesn't matter if you duplicate the background layer and make that layer a smart object. It won't matter. And you can see I still have the smart object here. It's not going to matter. I won't be able to go back in and re-edit anything. That's the bad thing. But at least you could crop from within Photo AI this way, and you could properly upscale an image in Photo AI. So let's do it. To do it, we go up to File, down to automate, then over and down to Topaz Photo AI. Now you'll see it makes, a, well, I don't know if you saw it, it made a new layer. So even if I was on the original background layer, it's not going to touch that original background layer. It's going to make a new layer. So autopilot is run and like before it says it needs sharpen, but you'll notice the crop tool is active. So the crop tool is there, but I don't need it because I cropped and deleted pixels when I cropped in Photoshop. So I don't need it. But if we go to Add Enhancements and we go to Upscale, you'll notice that section of Upscale is now available where I could actually upscale the image. So a 2x upscale will bring me up to 4484 by 6720. You can see it's there too. Um, I think that might be good. I mean, that's, I don't know, what, about 25 megapixels. Um, so that might be good. Now, of course, you're doing this in real life you know, because you're going to print it, you're going to probably go through the different AI models and decide which AI model works best. And then once you find the AI model that looks to be probably the best, you're probably going to go through the different sliders and set them properly for the image. But for the sake of this video, it's mainly a mechanics video here. I'm just showing you how to use the automate section of Photoshop to send an image such as this that needs to be upscaled or cropped into photo AI. A lot of people don't know how to do this. Now I mentioned the enhancing takes a long time and you can see it's still circling down there. So what we're going to do is I'm going to pause the video and then I'll come back when it's uh, done here and then we'll go back to Photoshop. Okay, we're done here. It updated the preview and I'm going to play with fire and I'm going to fit it to screen because it needs to re-enhance. But I think this might go a little quicker. But you can see that it looks pretty good. I mean, the um, without the enhancement, kick, enhancement kicked in yet. My crop, it's nice and tight on the chickadee. And um, overall, I think it did uh, a nice job, as Photo AI often does when you're upscaling something or removing noise or sharpening something, um, whatever. 
And I, again, I cover this all in my course in detail. The quick start section of my course is a little more of an overview. I don't get into super great detail there. I give just enough detail there for you to get started to use Photo AI. And then the enhancement section where I get into greater detail about all the different enhancements, including upscale, including what we did today. So I'm done. I'm going to export it back to Photoshop. And now it's in Photoshop. Now you can see we have three layers because I had that middle layer that I originally made uh, with and made it a smart object. It just doesn't matter. So this is not re-editable. All right. So let me see here. Let me fit it to screen. Looks pretty good. Now what's the dimensions of this image? Image size is 4484 by 6720. So if I'm happy with it, if I wanted to do more editing, I hear I could, but otherwise I could go down to file export, export as, and then I could file it or export it usually as a JPEG. You also could do it this way with a PNG or a GIF. Um, and you could then change, change the image size if you want to here. And if you want to save it with all this work, you would go to file and then down to save as, and you could do it either as a TIFF or a Photoshop file that will save all the layers. Excuse me. I like to use Photoshop file myself. It's just personal preference and then give it a name, save it to where you want, you're all good to go. So that is how you get around that issue when you need to upscale or crop something in Photo AI, and you're using Photo AI as a Photoshop plugin. There's a very specific way you have to send the image over there. Now, a reminder, I have this brand new course, just minted today, Mastering Topaz Labs Photo AI. Again, in the description below this video, I'll have a link to it, and I'll have a discount code. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.